All righty, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakar. This is Mori Medea, Yahoo bin Yashrael. I want to welcome you to another live broadcast of My Living Branch. So we are going to continue our journey of a bride. We're going to get you to that altar yet. So today's lesson is really going to challenge us. So I hope you're ready. I absolutely hope you're ready. If you're not, then it's going to be an area that you definitely need to look at more closely. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So we want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of our Miss Bacaz that are logging on. We appreciate you. Um for taking the time out on his set apart day to join us in this lesson. We got people from all over the world that joins us, so we're just ecstatic for all the fathers doing in this hour. It's really amazing how he works. So, what we're going to do first, let's pray. We'll do a little review. We know we're still doing our Omer challenge. Um, I'll probably, over the next day or so, go on the website and ask, you know, for updates, how everyone's doing. Um, so far, from the people I have communicated with, they they're giving me good feedback and some of the things that the father is doing for them and showing them through this whole process. All right, so let's pray, Miss Baka. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malik Haolam. Father, we say Toda Rabbah. For another set apart day that you have given us. We ask you, Father, to increase our fear of Elohim, increase our knowledge, our understanding, our memory, our recall. Everything that we need, wisdom, so that we can move forward in this walk and be pleasing in your sight. That is our objective, to be more like you. So, Father, we ask you that you would show us ourselves and cause us to address things that are in us that you require for us to get closer to you. Father, I thank you for revealing this portion of the lesson to me. I can take no credit, but I rely solely on you to give direction and understanding. So in the name of Mashiach Yahusha, we say Toda Rabbah for what you're going to teach us this day. Amen. Okay, so. So we know we're, uh, now we are back into our fast week. So look, make sure you look at and view the instructions on the chart. So that you can have an idea of where we are as far as fasting <laughs> and what you need to do. So it's, some are doing it. Um, the chart says, you know, one time during the week. I've had people doing more than once. So um, just let the Father lead you. Sometimes you go through circumstances in these in doing while we're doing these challenges that compel you to go an extra mile. Oh, excuse me. We are on prayer. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Maury Kanai. I'll make, I'll go back and look and make sure I got the chart there. But 
we'll just table that for now. More than one person telling me prayer. So pray it must be. So my my mind right now is more focused on what I have to deliver. So uh, we'll just keep keep moving forward. All right. So I want to remind you about the prophecy I was given back on the 27th. The ones that will return to the land of Israel as a remnant will walk in the spirit of servitude. They will return to the land as servants and be transformed into true brides. There will be a marriage, but servitude will be what opens that door to marriage. The book of Ruth will illustrate the point of Abihu, uh, the point that Abihu is talking about. Okay. Now, this morning, he woke me up from a dream, and that is in the middle of the slide. What he told me when he woke up, <laughs> that's going to be the challenging part for us. So, let's move forward. So, I wanted to start with mother's teaching. Okay. And then we'll go into what's connected to this. Proverbs 1.8. Hear my son, your father's instruction. Forsake not your mother's teaching. For they are a grace garland for your head and a pennant for your neck. Then 620, my son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. So the word there for teaching is Torah. Okay, and when we go over the root of Torah is Yera, to flow as water, to lay or throw like an arrow, to shoot, to hit the mark, to point out as if by aiming the finger, to teach. Okay, so your mother's instruction, don't forsake it. So we have a picture of this actually in the book of Ruth. And it's a very interesting picture that would challenge many of us. Okay, now... Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. For they are a graceful gar garland for your head and a pennant for your neck. So your head is rosh. Excuse me, rash. <clears throat> and here is the head, the sum. So you're talking about the first of the chief. And then we have the Hebrew word gar, gar gar, excuse me, gar gar, wrote. Okay. Now I want you to notice a pattern here. Lift up head, lift up head, connect or attach, sign. Interesting. So we're we're looking at the chief thing, and then we're looking at the throat area. It's a connecting point. In other words, what you have in your mind, your body, which is connected 
with your neck does. And this is how you're supposed to carry your father's instructions and don't forget your mother's teachings. Now let's look at the first, um, third chapter, the first verse of the book of Ruth. And I want you to think your mother's teachings. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? Is not Boaz our relative, with whose young women you were? See, he is weaning um, barley tonight at the threshing floor. Watch therefore and anoint yourself. Put on your cloak and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. And he will tell you what to do and her repl- and she replied all that you say i will do <laughs> now my question to you are you willing to follow the teachings because this is what this particular chapter is an illustration of you know and we still see here Ruth as a servant, humbling herself, following her mother's instruction, her mother's teaching, her mother's direction. And doing exactly what she says. And she says, all that you say, I will do. Now, many of us had this type of attitude when we came into the wall. But for some of us, it got spoiled along the way. And what do I mean by that? By various different versions of doctrines that you come along. And it caused you to look at the Father's word a certain way. Out of a a, a different lens. You could almost say it made you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because when you first came in, you were eating from the tree of knowledge. All you wanted to do was know more about him. Then, whether it was through other organizations or camps or wherever it may be, or individuals that were maybe off doctrinally, or maybe subjects that were near and dear to your heart, it made you go down a certain path in your thought process. And how you process the word of Elohim. And we're going to see that shortly. Okay. Following the teachings. Okay. Verse 6. Chapter 3. And she went down to the threshing floor. And did according to all her mother-in-law commanded her. And Boaz ate and drank. And his heart was glad. And he went to lay down to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. And it came to be at midnight that the man was startled, startled and turned himself and saw a woman lying at his feet. And he said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth your female servant. Now you shall spread your cover over your female servant, for you are a redeemer. Man, that that, that right there has a, a huge um, just background. We'll, we'll look at some of it. But l- look at this is this these concepts we no longer really 
grasp and understand, you know, how things were done, how they went about. I can hear some now. I ain't laying in no man's feet. See, you're, you're looking at it from the wrong angle already. You've already failed the test. And what failed it for you? Your attitude. And this is for all of us. Our willingness to follow teaching and instruction. Because it will be a blessing to us. And not just any, but his. Now notice what he says. He said, Blessed are you of Yahuwah, my daughter. For you have shown more love, loving commitment at the end than at the beginning. Now to go after young men... Not to go after young men, nor poor, nor rich. So he's complimenting her on how she's handling herself. And she's handling herself this way because who did she get advice from? She got it from that which was pleasant. Remember our previous lesson? We talked about Naomi, that which was pleasing. She followed those instructions. And what I'm trying to get you to see is the parallel there. Mother's teaching and the willingness. Okay. And now, my daughter, do not fear. All that you say, I do for you. For all the people of my town know that you are a capable woman. And now it is true that I am your redeemer. However, there is a redeemer nearer than I. Stop over tonight. And in the morning it shall be that if he does not redeem you, good. Let him do it. If he does redeem you, good, let him do it. But if he is not pleased to redeem you, then I shall redeem you as Yahuwah liveth. Lie down until morning. Now, I can see a, 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 lot, of, a, a lot of us, oh no, I don't want him, I want you. We're not willing to walk out the process of what it takes to grow in this walk. Because what does the instruction say? It talks about who's nearest of kin. So he's letting her know, I'm not the nearest of kin to you. So we have to do what the Torah says or, you know, what we've been taught and what we know. The nearest of kin has to have the opportunity first. And if he does redeem you, good. But if he doesn't, then I step in as the next of kin and I will redeem you as you who will live, you know. So they were willing to follow the process out. And my question for you in teaching and learning, are you willing to follow the process out? Sometimes we fight things so fast and we haven't even studied it out. We want to debate, we want to do all, but you haven't even studied it out. You want the mores to give you a quick answer, but you haven't even studied it out. I hope you're hearing me. You know, taking the time to understand how they operated. What was their culture like? What was acceptable then? Because the closer you get to the mountaintop, that stream gets even purer. 
Because that's the fresh water that's coming down. Now, this is what the father told me to interject this right here. And he instructed me that this is selfishness within us. So let me read what the, what the father, uh, after I woke up out of a dream, what he told me. The father woke me up out of a dream this morning. I had to add this slide to prove his point. Many of us say we love Torah and we love Yahuwah. The fact of the matter is you don't love Torah nor his voice because of how you treat his instructions and examples in scripture. Then he, pulled, he, he told me to pull this one out the bag because this seems to be near and dear to everybody. Deuteronomy 21 verse 15. If a man has two wives and one love and the other unloved, both the love and the unloved have borne children, borne him children. If the first, uh, if the f firstborn belongs to the unloved, then it goes on and gives the instruction. Now, many of us have problem because when we start to talk about this in our modern society, and it's not just this, I'm going to show you other examples. We've already come with a pre-conceived understanding of what we believe. We don't allow him to give us the belief. So if he gave instruction for uh, polygyny, that means somewhere in this, there's a righteous way to do it. But you said you love his word. So when you come into this text, or any text that gives you trouble, you should be approaching the text with a set apart mind to understand what the instruction is that he's giving. Not with your emotions, your opinions, your attitudes, what you think, what you believe. Because just like when it comes to marriage, there's uh, monogamy that's set apart as having one spouse. There's polygyny that's set apart. On the flip side of that, you have monogamy that's not set apart. If you don't believe that, go look at the divorce rates. And you have polygyny that's not set apart. So when we approach these texts that challenge our fiber, how are we processing it is the question. So when I read this, I'm not coming in with any pre preconceived notion of this one's right, this one's wrong. I'm coming here just for the father's instruction and his instruction is if a man has two wives. And I want to take you back to the 12 tribes. Ironically, many people fight, and this is not a um, me trying to say, oh, everybody go out and do pollution. No, that's not what this is. But the challenge is, what if his voice is speaking to you? What do you do then? Because he can give some instructions and direction that's for your betterment. Just like he did Israel. But your unwillingness to follow his instruction could be your downfall. And as far as what I was saying, what if Jacob or Jacob had the same mindset that you had? Would we even have a 12 tribes? See, 
you know, we, we talk big. But we don't consider what we are today and where we've gotten. It's not just based on one system. The father works things because he made a promise. He's going to make Abraham's seed as, as the stars. He said the same to Yitzhak or Isaac. He said the same to Yaakov or Jacob. That's what he does. So when you approach any text, you got to approach this as a servant. A servant is just trying to seek what his master's understanding is. But what happens is, because of our past, because of who we dealt with, because of all these other things, we don't approach his text set apart anymore. We don't think, you know, well, if it's that subject, that 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 can't be, because I know the father don't think like that. Oh, man, you just put all kind of stuff on the father that you haven't studied out or seen or even understand. But if you're going to be a true servant, you got to eliminate the selfishness that is all about you. Okay? It's all about him and his will and where he's trying to take us and what he's trying to do. If you truly love him, like you say, you love Torah and you love his voice, you love him, <clears throat> then it has no place for your opinion. You say what he say. You agree with what he agrees with. Okay, now let me show you some others. Now, what if we had to do what Isaiah had to do? Could we do it? At the time Yahuwah spoke to Isaiah, or Yeshayahu, the son of Amos, saying, Go, loose the sackcloth from your waist and take off your sandals from your feet. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. Then Yahuwah said, As my servant Yeshayahu, Isaiah, has walked naked and barefoot for three years as a sign for a potent against Egypt and Cush. So here again, you know, <coughs> your willingness to follow his voice. This is, this is what Isaiah was doing. He was following his voice. He was more concerned about the word of Elohim getting out than his own selfishness. I can't do that, Father. I'll be a mockery. They'll look at me this way. They'll look at me that way. Okay? And there are so many examples. Okay, let's look at Hosea. Or Hoshea. Verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. And when Yahuwah spoke through Hoshea or Hosea, Yahuwah said to Hosea, Go take to, your, uh, to yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom. For the land commits great whoredom by forsaking Yahuwah. Now, his voice comes to you and telling you to do stuff. As a sign to the nation, can you do it? This is where this is the where we're trying to reach in his teaching. That against, you know, our own self, we can follow. We can lay our stuff down because it's not our stuff that we're trying to get out. We're trying to get his word out, his instruction, his teaching. Okay, and I, I can think of, uh, you, you can think of uh, Jonah or Yonah. He didn't want to go preach to Nineveh because they were going to, he knew they would repent. So he went and tried to go another way. That's his voice coming. So what, what 
You know, this is why I'm saying we are so challenged with our selfishness. We've been programmed that way. This redemptive process probably wouldn't have worked for a lot of us because of how we're, pro- we're still programmed. We, we think more like the nations than we do like the scriptures. Because I can tell you, if we love them like we say we do, a lot of the stuff that we encounter, we see, we wouldn't encounter and see. And my thing is, I'm just trying to hear him. I'm not trying to prove what's right or wrong. I want to know him and how he wants it done and how they were taught and given examples in the ancient culture because we're supposed to seek that old path. Okay, let's keep going. Ruth 3 verse 9. He said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your female servant. Now you shall spread your covering over your female servant, for you are a redeemer. Gaal. Okay, now look at Gaal. If we were to talk about this, that it has a gimel, olive, Alamit. So if you look at the two outer letters, lift up, which is Gimel, teaching, strong, or strength. That's what redeeming does. It has a root in to redeem. It has a root in a certain teaching. And when you lift it up and you redeem, aren't we redeemed? It does magnificent things. Lift up teaching strong. Powerful thoughts. Okay, now I want you to show, I want to show, I want to show you this. Because this is, this is very interesting. It's something uh, that was spoken. Genesis 48. Verse 13. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, and towards Israel left. And Manasseh with his left hand towards Israel right, and brought them near him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, consequently directing his hand, for Manasseh was firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, The Elohim before whom my fathers Abraham and Yitzhak walked, the Elohim who fed me all my life long to this day, the messenger, the Malak, or the um, or the angel, who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the use, man. So we we got a a, a messenger here that he ascribed doing some redemptive work. Interesting. And let my name be called upon them and the name of my father, Abraham and Yitzhak, and let them increase to a multitude in the midst of the earth. So we were talking about redeeming. Lift up teaching strong or strength. Okay, now Leviticus 25, 25. When your brother becomes poor and has sold some of his possession and his redeemer, a close relative, come to redeem it, 
Then he shall redeem what his brother sold. And when the man has no one to redeem it, but he himself becomes able to redeem it, let then let him count the years since it sell, and return the remainder to the man to whom he sold it, that he shall return to his possession. And if his hand has not found enough to give back to him, then what was sold shall remain in the hand of him who bought it until the year of your bell. And it shall be released in your bell and return and shall return to his possession. Redemption. This is where we're heading. We were Yahuwah's possession. We we're returning to that through this whole process. But what's what's going to happen some are not going to make it because of how they process things how they view this word okay let's go back to the story following the teachings so she lay at his feet until the morning man she was able to follow instruction I wonder is is this us? Is she don't want to be recognized? A lot of people want to be seen, but that's not what this is all about. But arose before one could recognize another, and he said, "Let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor." And he said, "Bring the garment you are wearing and hold it up." So she held it and it measured six measures and he measured six measures of barley and put it on her. Then she went into the city and when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, how did you fare, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, these six measures of barley he gave to me. For he said to me, you must not go back empty handed to your mother in law. Now, if you've been taught something and you follow instructions, you should be producing fruit. So that means you should not be going back empty handed when you're presenting yourself. There should be some type of fruit for your following instructions. If you're following the instructions according to how they're written. She replied, wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out. For the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. So as a servant. You know, sometimes we try to get put our hands in the pot because we want it to go a certain way. Instead of, like I said before, following the process and allowing it to be worked out by those that it's supposed to be worked out by. So I know we're doing some reading. We got some other stuff we're going to do too. Fourth chapter, last chapter. Now Boaz had gone out to the gate and sat down. And behold, the Redeemer of whom Boaz had spoken came by. So Boaz said, turn aside, friend. Sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. He took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. Had, got, had witnesses. Then he said to the Redeemer, Naomi who has come back from the country of Moab is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our relative uh, Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, buy it in the presence of these sitting here, in the presence of the elders of my people. 
If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not tell me that I might know, for there is also, excuse me, there is no one besides you to redeem it. And I come after you. He said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you acquire Ruth the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. Then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. So this is a lesson for us. You know, what did this, what is Ruth as this, the female servant doing? That's what she addressed herself as. What was she doing? She was just waiting. She wasn't trying to influence the process. Letting the father work things out. We're guilty sometimes of trying to influence the process. We'll go talk to this one. We'll go talk to that one because we want the process to flow a certain way. But the way it's going to flow is going to be the way that's best for you. And you've got to know and believe and trust the father in the whole affair. So I want to read this part to you, um, Deuteronomy 25, verse 5. Because notice, you know, we we read a couple of things about sandals and feet. If brothers dwell together, it's talking about natural brothers, not just your uh, brotherly friends. One of them dies has no son the wife of the dead man shall not be married outside of the family to a stranger her husband's brother shall go into her and take her as his wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her and the first son whom she bears shall succeed to the name of his dead brother, that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. And if the man does not wish to take his brother's wife, then his brother's wife shall go up to the gate to the elders and say, my husband's brother refused to perpetuate his brother's name in Israel. He will not perform the duties of a husband's brother to me. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak to him. Okay, notice just just because she goes there and says this, it's not just automatically true. You have to talk to the person that did the action. Okay, this. Um, then the elders of the city shall call him and speak to him. And if he persists. Persists saying, I do not wish to take her. Then his brother's wife shall go out to him in the presence of the elders and pull his sandals off his feet, spit in his face. And she shall answer and say, so shall it be done to the man who does not build up his brother's house. And the name of his house shall be called in Israel the house of him who had his sandals pulled off. So this was an instruction that the father gave. And we see, we've seen uh, when Judah's son that 
the one that spilled the seed on the ground, the father said that was wicked. Killed him. Because he didn't want to raise up a seed for his brother. Goes back to that selfishness. Okay. Now this was a custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging. To confirm a transaction, the one drew off his sandals and gave it to the other. And this was the manner of attesting in Israel. So when the Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandals. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all that belongs to Elimelech and all that belongs to Chilium and to Mo, uh, Malam. Also Ruth, the Moabite, the widow of Malam, I have um, brought to be my wife. And no, notice his mindset. To perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off among his brothers and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. May Yahuwah make the woman who is coming into your house like Raquel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you act worthily in Ephra Ephrath. Ephrata, and be renowned in Bethlehem. May your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Yehuda, because of the offspring that Yehua will give you by this young woman. So, for these commandments to work and work effectively. You can't operate in a selfish spirit. I told one person that I was, that, that I'm, you know, in the process of guiding, that you have, you have got to just, just strip down and just start learning how to hear his voice. Because you don't heard so many things and you don't know how He's going to speak and work in your life. But right now, what you're doing is not working for you. So it's time to try something different. Okay, let's go back. And Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And he went into her and Yahuwah granted her conception. And she bore his son. And the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be of Yahuwah, who has not left you this day without a redeemer. Blessed be Yahuwah, who has not left you this day without a redeemer. Let his name be proclaimed in Israel. And he shall be to you a restorer of life and a sustainer of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons have bore him. And Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom. It became a nurse to him. And the women and her neighbors gave him a name saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He was the father of Yeshia or Yesi, the father of David. And it's beautiful. So I want to just go over a few things of a servant. And a lot of them I found in the Psalms that will be helpful for us. Because as a servant, our duty is to be like our master. 
to think like him, to make decisions like him, and to follow his instructions and to follow his voice. So let's read Psalms 90 verse 16. Let your work be shown to your servant and your esteemed power to your children. Psalm 119 verse 17. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. So the, the sovereign's word is at the heart of a servant. That's what he's concerned about. If he's a good servant. Verse 23. Even though princes shall plot against me. Your servant will meditate on your statues. So the servant is more concerned about. The instructions. The statues. What the master or the sovereign has laid out then he's concerned about people plotting against him. Remember your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. That's, that's where our hope is. That, that's it. If we know faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, now faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for. And where did the word come from? Where did faith come from? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Elohim. So it's got to be connected into that whole process. And it's not just when it says the word of Elohim, it's not the word that you agree with. It's all of the word. And that's, that's the thing I'm trying to get to you. It's all of his word. You approach all of his word from a set apart standpoint. Because if you already come with a preconceived notion, you know, you have blue lenses on and everything you look at in the word is going to be blue. But if you're righteous, when you look at things, you look at it from righteous standpoint. But if you work from the wicked one, Everything is going to be mixed. It's going to be, you know, filled with contempt, filled with debate, filled with indignation. You know, I don't argue with people, you know, if they want to go down a certain path. But I'm trying to go down the straight and narrow path that's lying with his word and what he's saying and what he's conveying. Okay, 65. You have dealt well with your servant, O Yahuwah, according to your word. That's how he deals with us. 124. Deal with your servant according to your step, fast love. Teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimony. So who's the servant concerned about? One thirty five. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Did you did you hear Ruth one time? Tell Naomi, I'm not doing that. She, as, as the scripture put it, was a capable woman. She was willing to follow the good instructions that were given to her. Proverbs 14, verse 35. A servant who deals wisely has the king's favor, but his wrath falls on one who acts shamefully. Okay, then Proverbs 17, 2, a servant who deals wisely will rule over a son who acts shamefully and will share the inheritance as one of the brothers. And 
the thing that stuck out to me was um, in Isaiah 53, verse 4. For thus saith Yahuwah to the eunuch who keeps my Shabbat, who chooses the things that please me and hold fast to my covenant, I will give to you. Give in my house and will and within my wall a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So I'm telling you, if, if you want to feel the full effect of this, you just got to grasp his word with with a set apart attitude. That everything that he instructed was good. Okay, now we're going to read this. And as I'm reading, I want you to ask the question, is this us or is this me more personal? Matthew 18, 23. Therefore, if the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to sell account with his servant. When he had begun to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold and his wife and children, all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and gave him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred Darius and seized him and began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. They went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summons him and said to him, you wicked servant. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me and shall not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you in anger. His master delivered him to the jail until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father would do to every one of you. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Those are powerful words from the Shia. Because people expect to be forgiven. But right here in the hustle and bustle amongst us, we don't even forgive one another. Okay, which servant are you? The wise servant, Matthew 24, 40. Five, who then is faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his house to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Who's the wicked servant? What's the character? L listen to what the wicked servant begins to do. But if that wicked servant say to himself, my master is delayed. Man, I done heard that He ain't coming. It'll be a while. And begin to beat his fellow servants. How they treat your fellow servants. Eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And in an hour he does not know. It will cut him into pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This stuff is not a game. Okay. 
for the last little portion, I want you to see the picture. Proverbs 21, 19, because we're still talking about the journey of a bride. It is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Okay, brawling, contest. Everything is contested. Just quarreling, brawling, contention. Okay, now the root word comes from a straight course. But notice it's got that mem in front of it, chaos. It disrupts that course. Isn't that interesting? Okay, and it's, it's also written in 25, verse 24, it's better to live in a corner of a housetop than in the house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Okay, Proverbs 19, 13. A foolish son is a ruin to his father. A wife's quarreling is a continual dripping of rain. Proverbs 27, 15. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a quarrelsome woman are alike. They just don't stop. Drip, 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 drip. And it's just aggravating. <clears throat> okay, Proverbs 21, verse 19. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome, fretful woman. Okay, so what is fretful? Chaos. To trouble, to grieve, rage, be indignant. Look at some of the translations. Vex, have sorrow, be wroth. And remember, we're trying to see the picture here. The house and wealth are inheritance from the father. But a prudent woman is from Yahuwah. Okay, to be circumspect, intelligence. Now, where is the intelligence coming from? Okay, the fear of Elohim is the beginning of knowledge. And if you're not careful, that intelligence can be invaded. And we've seen the story um, about how the serpent, you know, beguiled Eve how and was able to inject into that intelligence because notice where she gets the information from Adam now the enemy tries to influence to give her information that would taint the information that was given to her by the father but the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For Elohim knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. So then the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. So being able to follow the instructions, people will try to influence, the, cause you to have a certain twist on things. But your quest is to desire, as it says, the sincere milk of the word. What does it say? How does it apply? And not apply it from your modern culture. But you've got to journey back to ancient culture. Because if you don't, you're going to miss the whole true meaning. Okay, that's just the prophecy again. 
Now, who knows? Some might decide, hey, because he, you know, expressed some stuff on polygamy and I'm not with it. You know, I ain't going to watch. Well, I say to you, the father's trying to challenge you in his word. Do you come to him pre-programmed? If you do, you've got to deprogram and you've got to look how he has set things up. What is he telling you to do now? How is he directing you? You got so many bugs in your ears. So many spirits that try to influence. But now the journey is the servant that want to hear his voice. And love that voice and follow that voice. Follow those commands. That's what he's looking for, the good servant. So let's pray, Ms. Baka. We just went a little over, not much. Father, I thank you for challenging us to be better servants and where the heart of a servant should be. First, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions. We acknowledge the sins of our forefathers, which are ever before us. Our endeavor is to be closer to you, to be familiar with your voice so that we can follow you. Father, our desire is the purity of the word. Many have twisted it in their favor because of certain things that they are either for or against. But our desire, Father, is not that. We want your word to say what it says. And we want to come from the standpoint that we'll stand on your word. And that's what really matters. Not let culture and the nations dictate to us what you have spoken to us that's set apart. Father, I thank you for those that are willing to hear, for those that are willing to lay aside themselves, take up the tree and follow you daily. Take up that right counseling, that right direction, get on that right path. Thank you, Father, for preparing your people. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amen. All right, so don't forget, we this week is the hour of prayer. Hour of prayer. In the Omer Challenge. Okay, these are some great storybooks to help, you know, your children to teach and, cha- and train them. You just simply go to Amazon and search for the title. If you'd like to become part of the Bookmark Witnessing Team, you can. Just go to the website, bm.hebrewfoundation.org. And I think I got one order, bookmarkers. I have to send, I'll get those out this week. And if you want to visit our bookstore, definitely do that. If you'd like to support us, you can. You can do it online, cash out, PayPal. You can do it through the mail. It's even a donation button right there in the stream. You know, whatever the Father puts on your heart. So, not sure what we'll be doing next week. uh, But, as far as lesson, we'll let the Father guide us. I just say to you, you know, we've definitely got to view this word. The times we're in, the... They're basically, you know, right before us. You can, because your eyes are open, you can start to see this stuff play out. You know, how they're setting us up. So, I just encourage you to stay prayerful. To find out what path the Father has you on. So that you can be where you need to be. Because... As I, as I stated before, you know, they're presenting to the public one thing. 
But there is an agenda behind everything that's going on now. And you have to see it for what it is. And if you want to be in a place, hear his voice so he can direct you. All, all this stuff we really got to get out of us. And just say what the word says, do what the word says, be what the word says. That we've got to do. You know, because think about, and it just came to me, you know, where we were reading about if a man has a second wife. If you don't love his word, how can you guard that instruction? You would be talking about Someone that's trying to do exactly what that instruction that the father gave. But you can't guard that instruction because you already have something built in you that's against what he spoke or what he's trying to convey. Now, I ask you, if you didn't approach it from a set apart mindset, how can you guard it? You've already become an enemy because you're not seeing things he give, instruction he creates from a set apart mindset. So, Miss Bacar, I just just ask you take all the shades out, get you some clear lenses. Let's start to look at this word and our culture, how they lived. Because that's the culture that works. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to continue to wrestle with those that want to do their own thing. But you can guarantee these words will come back one day and find you. What the Father has been trying to convey. Accept his whole word, not just what you want. All right, Ms. Bakad, this is Maury Medad Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom, enjoy this day, make this the best Shabbat ever.